His basilica in the Vatican City in Rome. The cathedral on St. Peter's Square is a magnificent edifice capped with larger-than-life statues of the apostles. It's the most impressive monument of the Renaissance, with colonnades reminiscent of the temples of antiquity. St. Peter's is the largest church in the world, yet its construction would have been impossible just a few generations before. No one had the knowledge of mathematics, physics and structural engineering needed to plan and organize such a vast project. Then, in the mid-16th century, artists and scholars stepped onto the stage and managed to do things that had seemed impossible for the previous thousand years. Within just four generations, they accrued the knowledge necessary to carry out massive projects, such as St. Peter's. Europe was transformed under the influence of individuals like Michelangelo Buonarroti men of extraordinary accomplishment and versatility who found ways to bring seemingly impossible ideas to life. Their achievements still resonate today. But how did they do it? What was the secret of an age when the world seemed to undergo a paradigm shift? The age of the Renaissance. Rome, 1547. Perhaps one man stood out above all, Michelangelo Buonarroti, project manager, architect and artist on the construction site for St. Peter's. Although he was in his early 70s by this time, he was still driven by ambition. Michelangelo was a painter, sculptor, and architect. A scientist, iconoclast, and a genius. What we now refer to as a Renaissance man. One of his works would become the icon of an entire era. Michelangelo's David is perhaps the best-known sculpture in art history. Men like Michelangelo were the managers of an era in which art and culture, knowledge and technology developed at near lightning speed. Florence, 1501. Michelangelo astonished his contemporaries with works that seemed to border on the miraculous. He set out to carve David from a 12-ton block of marble, a feat at which two sculptors before him had failed. Michelangelo became obsessed with the undertaking and spent three years working non-stop on the five-meter-tall statue, the first monumental sculpture of the High Renaissance. From a cumbersome block of marble, Michelangelo's hammer and chisel revealed a human figure in the pose of a god. In the Renaissance, ended sich das Menschenbild vollkommen. The image of mankind changed in the Renaissance. Pope Innocent III said at the end of the 12th century that man was rottenness, formed of slime and ashes, a contemptible creature. The medieval belief that the sinful nature of man was visible in his appearance. During the Renaissance, we can see how this pessimistic view had become tiresome. The idea arose that man was almost like God. Man was God's creation, endowed with reason, with strength, and created in his image. Man could almost become a God. Some ten years after he completed David, Michelangelo finished his figure of Moses for the tomb of Pope Julius II. Larger than life, 
This Moses is an angry prophet with bulging veins and a fearsome visage, the way gods were depicted in the ancient world. Michelangelo may have learned from the masters of antiquity, but he didn't copy them. The Renaissance was more than just the rebirth of antiquity. Men like Michelangelo created something new. They took the techniques and art of the ancient Greeks and Romans and developed them further. You won't find a single artwork of the Renaissance that simply copies an ancient one. The crucial thing is that the Renaissance didn't just rediscover the critical spirit of the Greeks, for example. It didn't just grapple with the science and scholarship of antiquity. It developed everything further. It invented completely new things and toppled the ancient giants who had originally been its teachers. Botticelli's Primavera, one of the best-known works of Renaissance art. Raphael's School of Athens glorified ancient thought. And Leonardo da Vinci of realistically capturing the three-dimensional world on a flat canvas had been forgotten. The Renaissance rediscovered perspective. It was a quantum leap for architecture, which took its inspiration from the symmetry of the great buildings of the ancient world. The art of building huge domed structures had fallen into oblivion in the Middle Ages and was rediscovered in the Renaissance. But the Renaissance didn't limit itself to art. The invention of double-entry bookkeeping also meant that men of business now knew what funds they had available. The surplus fortunes of the newly wealthy flowed into the pockets of the era's artists. It was like an investment program for scholars and artists. Never before had so much been invented or devised in such a short period of time. New mechanical machines were created. And the human machine was researched in increasing detail. The study of anatomy reached a peak. The first pocket-sized timepieces were invented. This also made it possible to track the orbits of planets and the movements of celestial bodies. As the heavens guided seafarers, adventurers discovered new trade routes. The known world tripled in size. There's probably no place anywhere in the world where so much was discussed in one big conversation involving such a large number of participants, where things were invented in such quick succession. Printing triggered a huge discourse that captivated large parts of the population. Elites, scholars, and clerics too, of course, exchanged ideas and so invented groundbreaking new things. But what was the impetus for this exceptional period of history? What were the ingredients in this explosive development? How could men like Michelangelo suddenly reacquire knowledge and techniques that had been lost for centuries? Let's look back to Rome in the first century. Back then, the Romans were capable of constructing buildings like St. Peter's, as seen in the Roman Forum, the power center of an empire that ruled the Western world. Rome exported its way of life to its father's provinces. It dictated the art, culture and architecture of an entire era. At the time, Rome was home to a million people, 20 times more than one of the largest cities of the Renaissance, London. But Rome's dominance was built on the oppression of millions of slaves. Entire peoples were subjugated. For centuries, the Roman military machine succeeded in holding the empire together. 
But at some point, the barbarians gained the upper hand, the Germanic tribes, the Goths, and the Vandals. The Western Empire ceased to exist. Roma Caput Mundi, once the capital of the world and home to a million people, fell into decay, and the Dark Ages began. Much of the knowledge of antiquity was lost, in all areas, but particularly in engineering, architecture, mathematics, and physics. The ruins of the ancient world were plundered for building materials. Just a few generations after Rome fell, no one was capable of creating anything remotely comparable. In the year 330, the Roman Emperor Constantine had moved his capital to the Bosporus in what is now Turkey, naming it Constantinople in his own honor. After that, the empire split into an eastern and a western half. The Eastern Roman Empire, also known as Byzantium, endured until the 15th century. Constantinople was the second Rome, home to more than half a million people who called themselves Romaioi, Romans. The Byzantine emperors saw themselves as descendants of Caesar and Augustus, while its patriarch was head of the Orthodox Christians. Constantinople also became the repository of ancient wisdom. Its scholars were leading figures in every field. The Rome of the East was the bulwark of antiquity in the medieval world. No one had been able to conquer the city on the Bosporus. But one-seventh of its population were merchants from Genoa, Pisa, and the Republic of Venice, known as Latins. This affluent minority had a reputation for arrogance and belligerence, and were unpopular with the Eastern Romans. In early 1171, riots broke out in Pera, the Genoese quarter. The Emperor Manuel I Komnenos accused the Venetians of causing the trouble. Venetian merchants were imprisoned and their possessions confiscated. 